please take your seat so we can get started. Welcome to Lesson 1 of Basic Human Anatomy, the introduction. After completing this lesson, you should be able to define anatomy, the anatomical position, and different kinds of anatomical studies. You should be able to provide at least one good reason for studying anatomical terminology. You should be able to characterize the three types of body build and understand their clinical significance. You should be able to trace the organization of the human body into cells, tissues, organs, organ systems, and the total organism. I expect you to be able to list the parts of the upper and lower members and name the different anatomical planes and directions. Finally, after studying this material, you should be able to define the cell and match names of major cell components with drawings representing them. Anatomy is the study of the structure of the body. In contrast, physiology is the study of the functions of the body. No two human beings are built exactly alike, but we can group individuals into three major categories. These groups represent basic body shapes. They're called ectomorph, endomorph, and mesomorph. Morph means body or body form. Ecto means all energy is outgoing, so an ectomorph means a slim individual. Endo means all energy is stored inside, so an endomorph is a broad individual. Meso means in between or in the middle, so a mesomorph body type between the two others is a muscular type. Ectomorphs, slim persons, are more susceptible to lung infections. Endomorphs are more susceptible to heart disease. I'd like to say a few words about terminology. Each profession and each science has its own language. Lawyers have legal terminology. Physicians and other medical professions and occupations have medical terminology, and educators have objectives, domains, and curricula. To work in a legal field, you should know the meaning of quid pro quo. To work in a medical field, you should know the meanings of terms such as proximal, distal, sagittal, femur, humerus, thorax, and cerebellum. There are several kinds of anatomic studies. Microscopic anatomy is a study of structures that cannot be seen with the unaided eye. You need a microscope. Gross anatomy by systems is the study of organ systems such as the respiratory system or the digestive system. Gross anatomy by regions considers anatomy in terms of regions such as the trunk, the upper member, or lower member. Neuroanatomy studies the nervous system. Functional anatomy is the study of relationships between functions and structures. The human body is organized into cells, tissues, organs, organ systems, and the total organism. Cells are the smallest living unit of body construction. A tissue is a grouping of similar cells working together. Examples would be muscle tissue and nervous tissue. An organ is a structure composed of several different tissues performing a particular function. Examples would include the lungs and the heart. Organ systems are groups of organs which together perform an overall function. Examples would be the respiratory system and the digestive system. The total organism is the individual human being. You are a total organism. The human body is a single total composite. Everything works together. Each part acts in association with all other parts, yet it is also a series of regions. Each region is responsible for certain body activities. These three regions are called the torso, the head and neck, and the arms and legs. The torso includes the back and the trunk. The trunk includes the thorax or chest and abdomen. At the lower end of the trunk is the pelvis. The perineum is the portion of the body forming the floor of the pelvis. The lungs, the heart, and the digestive system are found in the trunk. The second region comprises the head and neck. The brain, eyes, ears, mouth, pharynx, and larynx are found in this region. The third region, the arms and legs, are also called members. Each upper member includes a shoulder, an arm, a forearm, a wrist, and a hand. Each lower member includes a hip, a thigh, a leg, an ankle, and a foot. As I mentioned earlier, you must know the language of a particular field to be successful in it. Each field has specific names for specific structures and functions. Unless you know the names and their meanings, you'll have trouble saying what you mean. You'll have trouble understanding what others are saying. You won't be able to communicate well. A scientific term is a word that names or gives special information about a structure or process. Some scientific terms have two or three different parts. These parts are known as a prefix, a root, and a suffix. Consider the word subcutaneous. Subcutaneous means below the skin. 
Sub means below, so sub is the prefix. Cutis means skin. Cutis is the root, subcutaneous. A second example is the word myocardium. Myocardium means the muscular wall of the heart. Myo means muscle, so myo is the prefix. Cardium means heart, so cardium is the root. A third example is the word tonsillitis. Tonsil is the root, itis is the suffix, and it means inflammation. So tonsillitis means inflammation of the tonsils. The anatomical position is an artificial posture of the human body. This position is used as a standard reference throughout the medical profession. We always speak of the parts of the body as if the body were in the anatomical position. This is true regardless of what position the body is actually in. In the anatomical position, the body stands erect with heels together. Upper members are along the sides with the palms of the hands facing forward. The head faces forward. The reason this is important is that the heart is always considered to be located above the diaphragm, regardless of whether the person is sitting at a table or hanging upside down. Sometimes we look at cross-sections of the human body to better understand anatomy. These cross-sections are called planes of the body. There are three basic ones, sagittal planes, horizontal planes, and frontal planes. Sagittal planes are vertical planes that pass through the body from front to back. The median or mid-sagittal plane is the vertical plane that divides the body into right and left halves. Horizontal or transverse planes are parallel to the floor. They are perpendicular to both the sagittal and the frontal planes. The frontal or coronal planes are vertical planes which pass through the body from side to side. They are perpendicular to the sagittal plane. Now let's talk for a few minutes about body directions. Superior means above. Inferior means below. The heart is above the diaphragm, so it is superior to it. The stomach is below the diaphragm, so we would say the stomach is inferior to the diaphragm. Anterior refers to the front of the body. A commonly used substitute word is ventral. A ventral hernia means a hernia that is located on the front of the body or the anterior side of the body. Posterior refers to the back of the body. A commonly used substitute word is dorsal. The dorsal fin on a shark arises from the shark's back. Medial means toward or nearer the midline of the body. The nose is medial to the ears. Lateral means away from the midline or toward the side of the body. The ears are lateral to the nose. Superficial means closer to the surface of the body. A superficial wound means one that is just on the surface of the skin. Deep means towards the center of the body or body part. A deep wound means one that penetrates well below the skin surface. Proximal and distal are terms applied specifically to the limbs. Proximal means nearer to the shoulder joint or the hip joint. Distal means further away from the shoulder joint or hip joint. Sometimes proximal and distal are used to identify the beginning and the end of the GI tract, that portion closer to the stomach being proximal while that being further away is distal. Names are chosen to describe the structure or process as much as possible. An international nomenclature was adopted for anatomy in Paris in 1955. It does not use the names of people for any structures, with the single exception of the Achilles tendon at the back of the foot and ankle. Names are chosen to identify structures properly. Names identify structures according to shape, size, color, function, and or location. Some examples would be these. We all have two trapezius muscles in our backs, one on each side, connecting our spine to our shoulders. The word trapezius means trapezoid-shaped, like a rectangle with two parallel sides and two non-parallel sides. Each leg has an adductor magnus muscle, connecting the thigh bone to the pelvis. Ad means toward, duct means to carry, and magnus means very large. Erythrocyte is a red blood cell. Erythro means red in color, and site means cell. Speaking of cells, a cell is the microscopic unit of a body organization. A typical animal cell includes a cell membrane, a nucleus, a nuclear membrane, a cytoplasm, ribosomes, endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, Golgi apparatus, centrioles, and lysosomes, and I'll talk a little bit about each of them. The nucleus plays a central role in the cell. Information is stored in the nucleus and distributed to guide the life processes of the cell. 
This information is in a chemical form called nucleic acids. Two types of structures found in the nucleus are chromosomes and nucleoli. Chromosomes can be seen clearly only during cell divisions. Chromosomes are composed of both nucleic acid and protein. Chromosomes contain genes. Genes are the basic units of heredity which are passed from parents to their children. Genes guide the activities of each individual cell. The cell membrane surrounds and separates the cell from its environment. The cell membrane allows past materials to pass through it as they enter or leave the cell. The fluid-like material that is found inside the cell but outside the nucleus is called the cytoplasm. Mitochondria are the powerhouses of the cell. The mitochondria provide the energy wherever it is needed for carrying on the cellular functions. The endoplasmic reticulum is a network of membranes, cavities, and canals. The endoplasmic reticulum helps in the transfer of materials from one part of the cell to the other. Ribosomes are protein factories in the cell. They are composed mainly of nucleic acids, which help them make proteins according to instructions provided by the genes. Centrioles help in the process of cell division. Lysosomes are membrane-bound spheres which contain enzymes that can digest intracellular structures or bacteria. Individual cells have fairly specific lifespans. Some types of cells have longer lifespans than others. During the process of growth and repair, new cells are being formed. The usual process of cell multiplication is called mitosis. There are two important factors to consider. From one cell, we get two new cells. And second, the genes of the new cells are identical for all practical purposes. They are identical to the genes of the original cell. Finally, I'd like to talk about the terms hypertrophy and hyperplasia. Hypertrophy and hyperplasia are two ways by which the cell mass of the body increases. With hypertrophy, there's an increase in the size of the individual cells. No new cells are formed. An example of this would be the enlargement of muscles due to exercise by the increased diameter of the individually striated muscle cells. With hyperplasia, there is an increase in the total number of cells. An example of abnormal hyperplasia would be cancer. Atrophy is seen where there is a loss of cell mass, either because of loss of numbers of cells or loss of cell volume. This concludes Lesson 1. Look over the lecture notes and study the illustrations particularly the regions of the human body, the anatomical planes, and the typical animal cell structure. Then you'll be ready to take the optional exam. I'll see you later for Lesson 2, The Tissues of the Body.